So this question is from John. How were your feeling? How were you feeling when you first stepped back in the major on a major league mound? Uh, I mean, kind of overwhelmed. Like, I was overwhelmed when they told me I was making the team. And then to be actually out on the field, it was against the Mets. Um, you know, it was that was the moment that I had been kind of striving for for about five years while I was grinding through, not knowing where the ball was going, you know, just in a really dark spot, really a miserable spot. And, uh, you know, it, the, the thought of being back on that mound is the only thing that had me waking up at four or five in the morning to go work out. Um, you know, again, I was working out and doing all this stuff and I couldn't play catch with a guy 50 feet away. You know what I mean? So, you know, I needed something and that distance, distant thought was, you know, for to finally come reality, become reality was, it was unbelievable, honestly. Like I, 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 I believed that it would happen, but at the same time, you have that doubt in your mind. Like, am I, am I just fooling myself? Um, yeah. And so when it actually happened, it was, just, it was a surreal moment. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, so, uh, this one is from Minor League Baseball Central on Instagram, the big time minor league page. Uh, this guy has a bunch of minor league followers and stuff. Big minor league following. Uh, fantastic guy. Uh, he wants he, he, he's not a big major league guy i don't i don't really get that but like cool <laughs> cool dude i talked to him but he wants to know what was your favorite memory as a minor league player as a minor league player um i think my favorite maybe not like one one time one memory but probably my my tulsa season when i played there in tulsa in what was that 2000 and 13 when I played in Tulsa 2013 double a it's probably my favorite season as a whole love the city great team we were good um and that was I don't know it was just a great season man that was the team to be on and, and I had a great time you know with all those guys and and they all had great just wives and, and girlfriends and we were able to just have a good time as, as a group of guys and, and a group of people honestly it was just a great great team awesome Awesome. So this question is from Alex, more of a, what is your favorite place to eat in Atlanta? Obviously with COVID, I don't know how much you've gotten out, but you have any favorite restaurants? Yeah, I haven't really gone out much. Honestly, we've been eating at the field. Um, there was a couple spots. I was living up in Alpharetta area. There was a, okay. a barbecue joint up there that was really good. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. I have to look it up on Yelp. Because uh, I'd pop in, grab my takeout, and, and hop on out of there as yeah. uh, as per protocol with Major League Baseball COVID rules. Uh, so I can't remember the name, but um, that was probably my favorite spot up in Alpharetta. It was right mm -hmm. in downtown Alpharetta area. It was it was delicious. I mean, we're back at home. We both live. I mean, we're both from Atlanta, but we, we don't yeah. go to school in, in Georgia. But um, I could probably what's there in Alpharetta? Cause it's probably uh, 20, 30 minutes away from where we live. Um, I've been up Dreamland? there so many times, but is it dreamland barbecue? I don't think it's dreamland barbecue. Do you remember what it is? Smoke Jack. Yes. I think Smoke that's Jack. it. I think that's, I believe it that's it. I think I've heard of it, but I don't think I've ever, mm -hmm. my dad's a big barbecue guy. So he, I know he, mm -hmm. he's probably been there a few times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, if you need, one, I think it's called Smoke Jack. I think it's like right downtown in that mm -hmm. little uh, little yeah. square they have right in the downtown Alfred mm -hmm. area. Yep. If you if you ever need some recommendations, we're we're here for you. So no, absolutely. Um, I'll take them for sure. But um that's for another time though, because we got we got <laughs> we don't want to right? just have a we're this is a baseball podcast, but we can talk about it later if you want. <laughs> Anyways, so this th this last one, I gotta make sure and and check if I have any more, but uh, this one is from another Braves page, uh, Braves content. Um, do you have a specific quote, motto, Bible verse, or something else that you use to motivate yourself? Yeah, so in my locker, I have a little uh, poster hanging up. Uh, I can't recite the quote, but it's uh, Man in the Arena by, uh, by uh, Theodore Roosevelt. Um, it's a long quote. Uh, it's a great quote but I could not recite the whole thing to you, but I, I like to read that every once in a while. And it just kind of remind myself that uh, there's a lot of people saying a lot of things, but you know, those are the people that 
aren't out here doing it. They're, they're sitting there telling you how you shouldn't be able to do it. You can't do it, but that's because they don't, they don't have uh, the courage to go ahead and try it themselves. Awesome. Anyways, uh, it was kind of like an exclusive thing because we, we wanted to surprise our listeners. So I only, uh, it was on my private story. So mm-hmm. only like people who I was like close with or like people who have supported the podcast for a while or just supported my page forever uh, were able yeah. to, um, which I mean, I know I probably did forget a few people. So if they're listening and <laughs> I'm probably going to get some angry, it, but... angry text messages here in a little while. <laughs> probably uh, this episode is going to be released on Sunday, but um, I, I don't think I've got, gotten any more. Uh, just some people like this is sick, <laughs> but um <laughs> Like that was that was the majority of the uh, DMs and texts I got. Um, so uh, just so we could just talk baseball for a bit. Uh, that's the last yeah. the last of the questions we have. Um, sure, but we can. This is kind of the unscripted part of the podcast. <laughs> so, um, what's it like? I guess this is just a question off the top of my head. Um, what's your favorite thing about like? Brian Snicker, the other coaches, um, you know, what's, what's your relationship like with some of the, like the manager, the, all your coaches, um, maybe even former coaches, what's that like? Yeah. So, I mean, I work closely with, uh, Cranny, Cran, it's because obviously he's the pitching coach and that dude's a, he's hilarious, man. Uh, he's always got something good for you. He's a, an old, old school pitching coach that um, keeps it fun, keeps a lot of energy going through the clubhouse. And I don't know, he's a, he's a different cat, man. I love him. And then I've known Walt for quite a while. He was my manager back in 2014 with the Rockies. So when I first came over, having him over it was nice to have a familiar face, somebody I could talk to, somebody I could ask questions like, hey, how do you guys go about this, you know, kind of thing. Um, because it's kind of intimidating walking into a clubhouse uh, and you got, you know, the future Mike Trout there, you got Freddie Freeman, you got, uh, Soroka, you got all these guys freed, you got all these like young studs and just a bunch of big name dudes. And I'm just like the scrub indie ball guy. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm a little afraid to go ask these guys, Hey, Hey, Freddie, how do you, uh, how do we wear our hat around here? How do we wear our jersey? You know what I mean? Like, you know, I'm not going to go up there and do that. So it was good to have Walt, you know, so a friendly face that I could uh, go ahead and, and talk to a little bit. Uh, Snit's, Snit's awesome, man. He's mm-hmm. just a quiet manager who goes about his business. Um, when you say hi to him and sit down and talk to him, he treats you just like you'd expect a, you know, a father to treat a son kind of thing. You know, he, uh, he lets you know what you need to know and he's just extremely, mm-hmm. you know, genuine person. Mm-hmm. Um, but honestly, as a, as a whole, the staff is just, it's been unbelievable here. Mm-hmm. Everyone, it, it feels like a family atmosphere and it's, it's been a great experience. Mm-hmm. And another name uh, that is no longer like with the Atlanta Braves organization, but uh, a guy who's been around for a while, uh, Marty Reed, uh, obviously mm-hmm. he was in the bullpen a lot. Uh, I, 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 I know like Luke might be like, what? But, but I mean, I know who uh, Marty me... Reed is. But uh, what was what was that like with uh, what's your relationship like with Marty? Because I, I, I'll tell you a quick story after this. But um, I kind of had a cool moment with uh, Marty Reed one time as well. So, uh, yeah, I love to hear that him? story. I love Marty. I mean, I was disappointed that uh, he wasn't able to come back with us. Um, you know, that's the front office decision to do whatever they're doing. I think they were moving in a different direction for whatever reason they're, you know, they were thinking. Uh, but on a personal level, I love Marty. Marty was a great human being. He uh, always had his bullpens back, all the guys down there. Um, and he was just a, a great coach to, to mm-hmm. you know, help us get ready for the game. You know, I, I really appreciated mm-hmm. his time. And he kind of, you know, never pitched – having never pitched in the big leagues out of a bullpen, he kind of showed me a couple things like, you know, expect this, expect that. So that was definitely a, a help. Um you know, I picked it up pretty quick and then we just were able to hang out and uh, just become, uh, become friends. Okay. So the, I've actually like never said this on the podcast, but um, only a handful of people actually know about this, but uh, we live relatively close to Kure field, which is a home of the 
formerly the Gwinnett Braves, now Gwinnett Stripers, our AAA affiliate. Mm-hmm. Um, and over the summer, I mean, when I was a little younger, I think it was they had this uh, junior camp. Yeah. So I would I would go to this like every year, and we would just play baseball with these AAA guys and um, get tips from the professionals. And a couple coaches were there, and at the time, Brian Snicker was the manager with them. And uh, Brian Snicker was able to like lead us all. He knew my name by like he knew my name. Which is so really? cool. Like, um, so I doubt he remembers me, but <laughs> but you know, if I ever man. does he have a good memory? He has a pretty good memory. You might. I don't know if he if he remembers one person's name from the Gwinnett. I think you you've grown up a little bit since then. I would hope, right? A little bit. I don't know if you'd recognize <laughs> me, but if I see him at like Chop Fest or something, I'll be like, you knew my name once. Yeah. Upon a time back in, <laughs> I, th- I think a lot. It was like from ages like eight to 15 or something like that. So it's been a few years, but um, yeah. And so we went like station to station. So like we would go down to into the tunnel, like hitting the batting cages. I think uh, Jose Yepes was a catcher for them at at that point. Now he's a, I think, is he a bullpen catcher for Mm -hmm. for real as well? He was part of that team. He was still playing, I believe. Um, And then Marty Reed was the uh, pitching coach. And uh, we had a pitching station in the Braves bullpen, or at that point it was, went at Braves bullpen now it's stripers but um and I remember throwing the pin and he said out of all the guys here oh, or this is Marty Reed but I was throwing the bullpen through a lot of fastballs maybe through through a couple curveballs here and there I didn't have the best off speed stuff but um he said out of all the guys here you probably have the best fastball I mean like he Sweet. said that very sincerely but obviously uh, my career is over now but like that's a, that's a that's a that's a fun memory that I have of Marty Reed I'll, I'll, always any Toss me a ball uh, back b- before a game, uh, right after batting practice one time. So, uh, some great times with Marty. Uh, I'm going to miss him. So you got a soft, you got a soft spot team, yeah. for him. Yeah, and Snicker. Um, but you know, Snicker's kind of <laughs> up there now, like a major league manager. You know. Yeah. That's like every everyone who no longer is able to play baseball that's kind of like what people want to do that's i know that's what chipper jones wants to do at some point and he's going to be he's a coach with y'all right now so um Mm -hmm. so speaking of like all these legends and stuff and luke i'll let you ask a question like and i've had a few minutes to like think of a question or something but um I have obviously very like basic question, but it's not like crazy. So, okay. (laughs) So, so this one's just kind of like, uh, something that I I actually had thought of because a couple episodes ago, we did a, um, episode. It was, we're, we're always like joking around and stuff, but this one was a serious episode where we would like, we honored Hank Aaron and Phil Necro and Don Sutton, three brace hall famers, three legends of the game. Um, I don't know about you, but I've, I've heard stories from players like I haven't like not personally, but um, but I know like Freddie Freeman like had a lot of things to say about like Hank Aaron because he was around the Braves a lot. Uh, I, and I know last year it was COVID, but um, maybe like during spring training. Do you have any like cool memories of like these, I, I guess, Braves legends? Uh, have you had any like interactions with them? And if so, yeah, how was so- that for you? Just with uh, with Hank Aaron, he was there in spring training um, last year, and I was on the minor league side, so I wasn't really around him much on the big league side. But what was really interesting, really cool to see, is that if he came down to the minor league side, and he'd come down into the cafeteria, he'd grab food there, and then he'd sit down at the table with some minor leaguers, and then he would just sit there and have a conversation with guys. And, you know, you, you, you wouldn't expect a Hall of Fame guy like that to – not waste his time but not give these guys the time of day you know what i mean but he was such a nice genuine person and he actually just sat down and had a conversation i don't even think half the conversation was about baseball i think it was just like hey how are you doing how's your family how's spring training going you know like not even hey you want to do this when you're swinging or you want to do that you know i think guys get so much of that already from coaches that um just getting to a personal level i think is is you know what he was doing with all those young minor leaguers to to kind of just show them that there's more to more to life than just worrying about what you're doing, uh, you know, up at the plate or out in the field or whatever. Um, so it was a really interesting to think, thing to see. Uh, it was so unfortunate to lose them um, mm-hmm. this past year. You know, I, I, I just feel for him and his family and just 
everybody that mm-hmm. was, you know, ever got to know him. But, uh, I mean, if you leave a legacy like that, man, not many people are going to forget you. They're going to, mm-hmm. they're going to miss you, but they ain't going to forget you. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, what about your time in Colorado? Did you, was uh, I think Todd Helton had already retired at that point, but you know, obviously, yeah, he left. He retired the year mm-hmm. before 2013, and I mm-hmm. came up in 14. So you might have been able. Did you like talk with him in spring training, or like did you ever get the chance to meet any, any <clears throat> of these guys? Like maybe Larry yeah, Walker was there bit. at some point. I don't know. Yeah, I got to talk to him a little bit um, in like spring training and stuff like that. He'd come over. You know, I was over on the minor league side most of the time. Um, and he'd come into the clubhouse every once in a while too. Uh, mm-hmm. so I saw, I got to see him a little bit, talk to him a little bit, um, you know, but I was fortunate to see, uh, you had to play with Justin Morneau and Kadire, you know, two guys that I think are great. I grew up watching those guys, you know, on the twins team that was a monster back in the day. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, having those guys on the team were just, you know, I wouldn't say they're quite Helton's level maybe, but like, they're still very, very, very good players. And it was just an honor to be on the field with, with the legends like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, Helton, it was unfortunate Helton left the year before I got there. Cause I would have loved, I heard some great stories from these guys and I would have loved to have been playing with them on the field. Awesome. Well, I'll, 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 I'll head it off to Luke. Cause I know he's been waiting for a little while. So Luke, take it away. <laughs> Go ahead. To get his glasses <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> I do have one. This is really just a generic question. Have you ever gotten a Freddie Freeman hug before? A Freddie Freeman hug? Yeah. I don't know if I got That's... a Freddie Freeman hug. I've gotten a Freddie hey. Freeman like shoulder <laughs> tap and like a pat or whatever. Uh, I can't tell you how many people. Two. Everybody I've talked to, I mean, I, I like two or three people that have actually talked to Freddie. Apparently, his hugs are amazing. Like, I mean, <laughs> this guy just loves giving hugs. Hey, I don't know but, what it is. Hey, I'll, I, have to ask him. I'll tell him I'm jealous that I haven't gotten a Freddie Freeman <laughs> hug yet, and that I need to get one. I apparently need to experience mm-hmm. a Freddie Freeman hug. <laughs> no, what's the difference I mean, between I, a Freeman hug and a regular hug? But hey, hey I, I, mean, I mean, you came around in 2020. It was COVID. You couldn't really hug guys. You know. <laughs> <laughs> rules are made to be broken i guess for, for freddie i'll break the rule I'll get, I'll get a little hug in there it's, maybe a hug from I'm trying to see who, who, who's talked to you about uh freddie freeman's hugs i want to hear it i want to hear this too i don't know about this. <laughs> it was one of my friends so he he went to a a game this was this is a while ago and he you know he was just down like he got to the game early and you know, just down there, but where you get autographs and stuff. And apparently, he gave up and gave him a hug. And I was, and he's like, "Dude, that was the best hug I've ever gotten." I was like, "What?" <laughs> I, I don't know if there's a difference it because quality. it's like it does everything well. Yeah, I don't know if it's difference because it's well. franchise that franchise guy. I don't know if the hug's different or I don't know, <laughs> but it's, it was oh, funny. Mm-hmm. That's hilarious. I, I haven't heard that one. That's a good one. I'll have to ask him about it. <laughs> yeah, like out of all the guys on the team. He's been around the longest, of course, but I mean, I've been going to Chop Fest basically every year they've had it. Uh, I went to a caravan one year, which is before what they did before Chop Fest. And I, I mm-hmm. said this in another podcast where um, like five guys from the team, it, would, it could be coaches, it could be a couple players, a little mix of both. Uh, we're actually got to meet Chipper Jones, which that was awesome. Uh, but um, out of all the guys, even though Freddie Freeman's been there the longest, he's like the one guy I actually have not been able to meet. Really? Yeah. So it's on my bucket list, but um, you know, well, he's just a super nice guy, man. Mm-hmm. Pretty quiet. Mm-hmm. He's he's just a good guy. Mm-hmm. That's what it comes mm-hmm. down to. You know, it's just mm-hmm. I, what amazed me when I came over too was like he he works hard on his craft, obviously, but like he doesn't need much to be freddie freeman like he doesn't mm-hmm. spend hours and hours and hours in the cage and stressing all this stuff he's such a good natural talent that he can go in get 10 15 20 minutes of what he needs and he's like all right i'm ready to go and he mm-hmm. goes out there and does what he does man mm-hmm. it's unbelievable you can just mm-hmm. it's a testament to his natural ability and him knowing himself so well that he can go out there and just compete at the highest mm-hmm. level mm-hmm and one of the things that like I do try to get like maybe like a picture, maybe an autograph before the game. I've done it before. A lot of people have, uh, but like some players just don't like that. But like, you know, obviously as a kid, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm still a kid, but you know, <laughs> I want to be a kid, but maybe I'm not. Get it hard. <laughs> but, but obviously 
I have a my brother one of my brother's best friends uh he's actually a senior at Stanford right now I'm not going to say his name yet but he's actually going to wants to be on a podcast episode sometime so that'll be interesting but um he and his family actually uh like it's mainly I don't think it's mainly him I think it's his dad does not like Freddie Freeman at all because he was right he was right by the because they were right by the Braves dugout trying to you know get an autograph but or something they yelled like as loud as they could like freddy and freddy just like like he like peeked around but he like kept he kept jogging he like he just completely ignored him <laughs> but, well. you, know, you gotta but, think you know, man like i tell fans this mm-hmm. all the time like if he stopped for every single person huh. to spend 10 seconds with them every mm-hmm. single one there's sixty thousand people he'd be there for three days talking for 10 <laughs> seconds true. to every single person mm-hmm. you know and, and signing an autograph and then talking to them apparently giving them mm-hmm. hugs like <laughs> it's it's gonna take way too much yeah. time you can't please everybody and i don't think you should judge players yeah on I, I, it's not me fan interaction right. like that i think you should yeah. judge players on uh just how they are other places you know mm-hmm. it's hard to it's hard to please everybody especially when you got 30, 40, 50,000 people screaming to have a piece of your time. It's very difficult. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not me, but that's it's just not someone a val- else's I just story. don't think it's a valid, <laughs> a valid reason to hate somebody. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, there's yeah. some guys that'll be like, screw you, and they're getting all mean or something. Okay, yeah, you can hate that guy. But just because yeah. he wasn't able to come over and spend, you know, 10, mm-hmm. 15, 20, 30 seconds with you doesn't mm-hmm. mean Freddie's a bad guy. That's just no, a general uh, thing. You know, yeah. I mean, it's not me. Uh, I'm just making that clear. It's not me. I love Freddie. <laughs> I think he's fantastic. I would do. I would love to meet him one day, and one day I hope I get the chance to. But, you know, obviously, it's a little tough right now because you know you, I don't know if you can even get close to the dugout uh, uh, next year. Not but, really. And I then think they're, they're the planning screens. on like blocking off. Yeah, blocking mm-hmm. off a couple rows from the field. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's going to be difficult, but maybe a chop fest one year. I, I think you have to pay for an autograph session. And he kid doesn't have like a, because uh, a lot of the times you just have like a photo station where you get a picture with a player and whatever. And then you, you get a picture and then you stand in line, you take a picture and then you're done. And then, yeah. you know, players are only there for certain intervals. And once they move, like you can yell all you want, like, can I just get one quick picture? Like th- they just keep walking. And it, I mean, yeah. that happened with me and Shane Green last year. And I was like, oh, but, um, you know, obviously, players are very busy, and like, obviously, it, it's hard to judge a player by like not wanting to spend like ten seconds with with you. But you know, obviously, as a fan, as maybe a kid, that might be tough. But you know, these guys have a job to do. So, I mean, I get it. So, yeah. but I will say this: from running a brace page for seven years, I don't know how I've done it, but I have. I'm just dedicated, I guess. But um, I, I have people have asked me like have you had thoughts of quitting it and i was i mean if i'm being honest i have but um but just from running it for a while i i have interacted with a lot of players but mainly like minor league players but Mm -hmm. interacting with major league players like you okay this honestly as a fan this means a ton that you would take the time to you know talk with some just everyday fans i know we have a podcast maybe that's not like everyday fans but you know we're maybe a little more diehard than others but um as i said like you're one of the few guys like that are nice or i, I guess like I, I, i'm not saying like other guys aren't nice i don't know how to really <laughs> word this but just you taking the time to do this for us today like it means a, it means a ton so we yeah. do really appreciate it yeah, no problem, guys, man. I appreciate mm-hmm. – I mean, I appreciate you guys wanting to reach out and talk to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it was a handful of years ago where I wasn't even in a position where anybody wanted to talk to me. So just to have people reach out and be like, hey, we care about you and we would like mm-hmm. to hear your story is – it's huge for me too. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate you guys mm-hmm. doing this and reaching out to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah I'll also uh, – I mean, he's not with the Braves anymore, but one of the best guys that always interacted with players. Okay. Um it was Matt Joyce. And I, I, I know you weren't with a team when he was a brave, that was 2019, but um, he actually posted on a story. Like I, I thanked him for his time in Atlanta and just always interacting with the fans and stuff. And he was, and he responded and he posted on his story. And that was like one of the coolest wow. moments I've ever had. Um, like interaction with like interacting with a player. And 
um, just we're, we're, we're about to wrap up, but um, once again, like it, just keep like if you can. I know, like obviously, like more fans are going to be in the stands this year. You're going to probably get a large following, and you're probably you probably get a lot of DMs and stuff. Um, just uh, if if you can, just keep interacting with them. Like the, yeah, the, yeah like, of course. It, it, it like it it makes my day it made my week that you decided to come on yeah it was it was really cool mm -hmm. i was actually i remember face i was facetiming my my parents and i saw your name i was like hold up wait what because he dm'd you i didn't dm yeah. you and i was like i was wait, in charge of that. say tyler madsick <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was course, really man. cool i mm -hmm. mean it's I don't know, man. You got to remember that we're all human beings, and I'm a human being. You guys are too. Mm -hmm. it's, I just happen to do something that's entertaining to people, and they like to watch. Mm -hmm. You know, I, mm -hmm. I don't try and put myself on a pedestal of any mm -hmm. kind. Yeah. Um, and I think a majority of players don't. I honestly think that it's just it's a time thing for a lot of people right now. Honestly, it's it would be hard to do a podcast like this during the regular season. Spring training is mm -hmm. the time to do it because yeah, you know, on days like this, I went to the field, play catch do a little bit of pfp work and then i'm home for the day but during a regular season man i got i'm waking up getting food going to the field and i'm not done till 11 o'clock at night and by then i'm trying to go to bed so mm -hmm. yeah. um it's it's mm -hmm. now's the time to do it and i'm just i'm again mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad you guys reached out mm -hmm. and we're able to uh we're mm -hmm. able to do this and you know we can get the story mm -hmm. out there of just you know how mm -hmm. how my life's gone how my career is gone and mm -hmm. uh you know, give you a little insight into a Braves player. Yeah. Well, that just about wraps it up. Unless you got anything else, Luke, you good? No, I think, I, I right. think we got everything. All right. So, uh, so uh, once again, we really appreciate you coming on. Uh, we'll let you go. Uh, have a great rest of your day. Yeah. And uh, who knows? Maybe we, we can do this again one day. I don't know. But sounds good, guys. I appreciate appre it. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Yeah, of yeah. course. Uh, thank you again so much. And, uh, We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you at Truist Park this year. We'll we'll <laughs> certainly shout at you. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. See ya.